if you are anything like me and are just thinking, dang, wish I could have won that cooler. You got a home here. Well, to the Go Show, celebrating all things outdoors in this beautiful outdoor playground of a world that we live in. Thanks for streaming along on Facebook, YouTube, and the Tweet Machine, um, aka X, whatever, whatever we're going to call the thing from moving forward. I'm going to stick with Twitter uh, because I'm old and I'm just going to stick with Twitter. Uh, thanks for um, watching that video last night and a, a big uh, a big congratulations to the new owner of the Mule 30. That thing is cool. I'm telling you. Big thank you to Canyon Coolers again for uh, helping us out and donating that so we could uh, that we can uh, uh, raffle that thing off. Almost said auction that off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wounds are still a little tender from uh, the whole auction item thing. So uh, raffles. So I, I wanted to uh, chat with you about raffles today. I also want to talk to you about how long freezer meat is going to last. How long is your game meat going to last in the freezer? We're definitely going to chat about that because I got a freezer full and I participated in what was called an eat down. My girlfriend introduced me to that, an eat down. And I, I didn't know what an eat down was. Apparently, if you're clearing room in your freezer or fridge, you have an eat down. It's like a smack down, hoe down, but we're not smacking and there's no hose involved. So we're just going to, anyway, eat what's in the freezer. And uh, how long does that last? So you go in there, you see some venison and you're thinking, uh, who gave me venison? How did I get venison? How long has that been in here? Uh, how long does that last? What to do with it? Uh, we'll get to that as well. But uh, here, here's, here's the thing. One big part of our outdoor world and conservation banquets and events that you have, it, you see a lot of bucket raffles. And bucket raffles are a thing. And what reminded me of this is, is was us donating that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, raffling off that donated canning cooler yesterday. And it, it kind of got, got me thinking, you know what? I might do a little PSA on getting this right. Either, either, either you're an organization that wants to have a bucket raffle, have some sort of a raffle like that at an event or at a, a show like it was at the expo, uh, or you're someone who likes to throw the tickets in. Let's have a chat. Okay. First of all, there are simple rules for having bucket raffles, and I'm not talking about gaming laws or anything. If you're an outdoor banquet and there are buckets there, there are rules. Here's the number one rule, and I'm going to say this on behalf of everyone who has to reach into those dang buckets, pull it out, and read a name. Who taught y'all how to write? Holy mackerel. I'm, <laughs> I have to do this. And God forbid it's in front of an entire banquet of, uh, of a thousand people and they're staring at me and I'm like, uh, let me kind of use my, my, my context clues on each letter and I might piece something together. No, write it legibly. Or if, if I'm the guy who's pulling it out of the, out of the hat or the bucket next, write legibly or just write your last name don't, so you don't have to go through all of them. my name's michael russell putting that on a bit on a little tiny ticket not that easy i have seen and this is fantastic too i've seen people buy stamps so they they have stamps so, so they, they literally they, they go to the, all these auctions i'm sorry they go to all these raffles i can't say that word it's the a word now they go to these raffles and these bucket raffles and they're just stamp 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 so their names are are legible and their phone number and email address all on there. Pop. I don't know how much that costs. I'm going to guess it's like 20, 30 bucks uh, worth it. If you go to a lot of these banquets and you're putting your name on all these things. Oh, heck yeah. That's a, and, and thank you, by the way, on behalf of everyone who's going to pull your name out of a bucket. Thank you for doing that. And it saves us a lot of time and hassle. It's a lot like reading a Dr. Seuss book to your kids. You remember those days where you're reading Dr. Seuss books? Because Dr. Seuss... Some would say, God love him. I say, Ugh. that that author is responsible for more parents sounding to their children like they don't know how to read. You start getting into the Sam I am's and the this and the that's and the, the, the tempo and the cadence of a Dr. Seuss book, you'll look like you can't read to your kids. You're stumbling, fumbling, bumbling all over the place. And it's the same if you're pulling out of these bucket raffles at these banquets. You're pulling out a bucket raffle and you you can't read a name. It says Bill Smith, but it looks like it says, I have no idea. I didn't think of anything funny to put on that one, but Bill Smith, and you, you can't read Bill Smith. And then some kid comes along inevitably and goes, that says Bill Smith. Okay, now I have to announce it. Bill Smith. I couldn't read Bill Smith. <laughs> so just, just write your name properly. 
just write your name properly and, uh, and, and make sure you have all your information on there. So, uh, you know, depending on what, where you're at, right? So you need to bring a, a bit of strategy into these things because it makes it more fun. Now, when I say a bit of strategy, here's what I mean. Bending, you know, people bend the tickets, go in these bucket raffles, bend the ticket, bend the ticket, bend the ticket. Does that work? Don't know. Really, no one knows if it works or not because other people bendy, bendy as well. And then everything is bend, bend. Everything's the same. It kind of eliminates that. But does it work? Does it not? Who cares? If you think it works and it adds a little bit of a, a dopamine hit to you when you drop it in there, like, oh, God, I got it this time. You know what I mean? I bent it. <laughs> uh, fine. Cool. Make it more fun. Uh, do it anyway. Uh, some people are like, oh, you don't bend those. That's just a waste of time. And if, no, it isn't. I'm having fun. This is how I do it. This is my. This is how I'm entering the dr the drawing. So uh, you're gonna have to just deal with. It. Who cares? It's you. It's your excitement. It's your fun. It's your money. It's your opportunity. Go for it. But if you're running a raffle, now this is what we've run into in the last couple of weeks, and we've been talking about this because even the R word, a raffle, is like, oh, we can't say that now. We can't can't say auction. Can't say raffle. But uh, what are we gonna call it? Can't say sweepstakes. I don't I, I don't get it. But if you're going to have a bucket item, a bucket raffle item at one of your banquets or events that you're you're doing, um, there's probably a, a, a couple of cool ways or cool tips and tricks that you uh, you need to understand before going in. OK, um, if it's not a banquet, OK, if it's a. It, it, basically, let them know if, it, if it's not a banquet and you're raffling like we did uh, the, the Canyon Cooler. And by the way, if you go to canyoncoolers.com and you use the code GOSHOW, 15% off, one five, boom, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I'll take care of the taxes. That's right, I got you. Um, if you're doing that, let the people know, by the way, when they're filling it out, that they're going to be contacted. They understand, it's assumed, but I think you will have more success if you say, yeah, just uh, go ahead and um, go ahead and write this down, fill out the ticket. Uh, there you go, and uh, we'll reach out to you and tell you about, uh, about our organization and the cool stuff that we got going on. That is going to help in the future for open rates, click rates, people un it lower the amount of people unsubscribing because they know now that they, they yeah, if they want, if you want to shout at one of the thing, you can at least read an email from me saying uh, that, that we do what we do here at this organization. Right. So if it's not a, if it's not a bucket, uh, it's not a bucket raffle for a specific item and it's just um, uh, you gaining some information, email addresses, stuff for your mailing list. Let them know. I mean, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So if I fill out this ticket with my name and number on it and stuff like that, you guys are probably going to call me, aren't you? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Give me give me a call. Um, there's, I think, five or six numbers that ring through on my phone, and that's it. Other than that, I can I can check it later if I if I need to. So fine, go ahead, sign up. And my, are you kidding me? My Gmail account is is just a spam. It's just constant. I think I delete seventy emails, seventy five emails, uh, every other few days. Yeah, it's. It's crazy. Now, know this if you're going to run a bucket raffle for any item at your banquet uh, or fundraiser, uh, everyone is going to think it's rigged. Period. I'm, it's the nature of things. It's, it's the world we live in right now where we just assume that everything is rigged. And if it's something that they want and they don't win or they see that, oh, God forbid, Mike's the one drawing and I saw the person that won it, that person was a guest on a show once, has to be rigged. Nah. They will assume that, though. You know it's not rigged. You're like, I don't know. You put tickets in here. I reach in there and grab the dang thing, and there we go. That's the winner. I, I, I'm not a magician. I, don't know, I wasn't palming a ticket as I went down in there. Um, and trust me, if I was rigging this stuff, it would be for my family, and I will have it at my house, especially that candy cooler because I wanted it bad. So this is, uh, th this is something that is just going to be assumed by everybody. It's our nature. We're to the point right now as a society that, that when we find out that things were rigged or that, that somebody was a knucklehead or or somebody wasn't what we thought that person was going to be, we're like, yeah, 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 expected that. So when you're doing these types of things, know that everyone's going to think that that's, I, I feel sorry for executives or high level uh, branch chiefs and directors at uh, at Game and Fish and the commissioners. I feel bad for them. Because constantly, even if you're running one of the critter groups, say you're, uh, you're say you're Steve Clark at uh, Arizona Elk Society, uh, it's like, oh man, I bet you got drawn, bet you got drawn for a tag, eh? Bet you get a tag every year, uh, Elk Society, huh? Yeah. No, not the case. 
Uh, commissioners, directors, same things. They're the same thing. They're going to get that. Oh, yeah. Well, you work for the department. So obviously you were drawn because when they do get drawn, they're like, oh, yeah, of course. Of course you got drawn. They're a director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're a branch chief. <laughs> uh, uh, us, us common folks just don't get drawn. They don't, by the way. Uh, if you've missed any part of the show over the last 11 years, that was actually surprising to me. Because even 11 years ago, I was as much of a skeptic as I am today. I'm more of a skeptic, though, but I was a skeptic back then as well. So I assumed that if uh, the, you're the director of Game and Fish, you got tagged. If you were a, a high-level person, you just got tagged. And as, as, as junky as that sounds, it doesn't matter because it's just it's the, the assumption. But it's not. It's not the way it goes. Again, I was standing in between a commissioner and the director. The, the director of Arizona Game Fish Department, both talking about how they didn't get drawn. So it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't, oh, but if he's a director, he can, nope. I'm telling you, everything is on the up, up and up. Everything is above board. But the more people don't get drawn, and the longer they go without getting drawn, what happens? They start to get skeptical that something is happening, that something bad is happening. Yeah. Oh, Eddie, thanks for uh, popping in there. Dude, we're doing this every day, Eddie. We're going every day at 11, straight up. Yeah, we did uh, did a few weeks of Sunday, uh, Saturday mornings, but now we're just doing this every day, Monday through Friday, eleven o'clock. Let's talk about the outdoors. Let's just uh, let's have some fun. So I, I appreciate you uh, appreciate you asking, asking the question. Uh, we'll probably start doing eventually a Saturday morning recap of what we had for the week, kind of a highlight, best of kind of thing, and uh, keep it going. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, thanks for playing along, and uh, and always encourage you to uh, to comment as well. Now. Going back to this, if you are going to be somebody that's going to do one of these bucket raffles at your uh, your event, uh, be as transparent as possible. Just just be as transparent as possible. Have somebody else grab it for you. Like grab a kid from the crowd. Just say, hey, listen, this is going to be my assistant. This is the person. The kid's not going to be shady. No, like I mean, I mean, how how skeptical do you have to be? You have to be a cynic above cynics. You have to be even more cynical than me to think that I like trained a kid in the parking lot, how to palm tickets and make sure that all my people win the buck So you know, be as transparent as possible. If you're going to do it from the, uh, the office, like I did yesterday, uh, make sure that that's posted online, do a live stream. If you'd like to do a live stream. So there's just no shadiness, no opportunity. People go, Oh, of course, Robert won it. I sorry. That's it's the name we grabbed and you saw it right there on the video. There's no, um, uh, could be some tricky editing though. See, I told you I'm a skeptic. I can, I, I'm a cynic. I can figure out that there's something going on here. There is a magician that I follow, a card, a card trick guy on on Instagram. That he had, um, that he had the, uh, he has a timer, a little stopwatch. And when he starts his videos, the timer is on screen the entire time. So that eliminates people saying, "Oh, you've totally edited this out. You've edited." No, look, watch the clock. There it is, right there. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Eddie, yeah, had good two year running getting drawn. I'm telling you, I went, uh, oh, I'm going to say nine years uh, without getting drawn. Nine. And that's when I had this show, too. So people, oh, yeah, you got a tag. You've got an outdoor show. You know, not how it works again. I went a nine year run dry, and three of the last six years got drawn. Like every year I get drawn. I have a seven West tag this year. So uh, excited about that. So you, basically, uh, this might be. Um, I might just bite the bullet and uh, reach out to a few of my outfitters and see if I can get uh, get taken care of because this might be my last shot at a bowl that I can actually move. You know, like maybe I get 15 years, I got to wait again. Uh, this might be my last shot about uh, putting a trophy up on the wall. So we'll see. Um, oh, and I guess that's a bad word too. There's a lot of bad words we can't say now. Can't say raffle. Can't say uh, auction. Can't say trophy. <sighs> it's getting exhausting. Yeah. 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 They uh, Population is nice. And then um, there's there's some people know my buddy Clayton. My buddy Clayton got drawn for he went like on a 11 year drought, and they got drawn for I, I forget within two years he had elk, deer, pronghorn, and sheep. Like oh, and that's when you think the fix is in. But I mean, when the the points are what the points are, they are. So uh, please do this by the way. If you, if you have any questions on how the Arizona draw is, I know we're talking about bucket raffles, but if uh, if you have any questions about how the Arizona State uh, game big game tag draw is conducted go to our youtube page and check it out i uh, scroll down a bit i'll see if i can pop that up to the top maybe you can pin it i don't know if you can do that at youtube but it'll give it a try uh and it'll answer some questions it'll it just sh shows you exactly how it's all done it's all in the up and up I'm telling you 
It's all on the up and up. Uh, so post that video or do it live if you're going to do a, a raffle and then um, let the winner know as soon as you can. Let the winner know as soon as you can. And then hopefully when you're letting that winner know, say, hey, listen, uh, either Mike's going to drop it off or uh, meet you up somewhere. and We're going to grab that. Uh, you're going to get that. He's probably going to do a video. He's going to take a picture. Um, or if you're just going to come and grab it, pick it up. Maybe uh, when you get it home, maybe you post, maybe you tag us. Okay. So set some set some ground rules, kind of a pay for play kind of thing. Like if you uh, if you really want to, if you really want to um, to to get this wonderful prize, it was gonna have to do a little something something, right? I would think that that's fair. I totally would. So this is the Go Show. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, and, and by the way, again, go to CanyonCoolers.com. Uh, they got a lot of cool stuff. Their drinkware is so cool. They have a, a Flagstaff artist that does it for them. They're drinking like no stickers. You're not going to want to put stickers on this. Everybody put stickers on the drinkware. You're not going to want to do this because it's really, really cool stuff. They got some cool swag. How about this? Quite literally, the most comfortable shirts I own. Holy mackerel. I just ordered some more of them. They are that comfortable. Amazing. Uh, CanyonCoolers.com. Use the code GOSHOW to get 15% off of your order. So uh, check that out. So let's talk about this. I have a freezer that is full. I know I'm blessed. I know I am, am very lucky to have that. I have a full freezer. And uh, to get to that, uh, to get to make room, I had to do what was called an eat down. And this eat down is something that is, is actually fun because it saves you money. If you have a full freezer of game meat, there really is no reason for you to go to the store and get any kind of other animal protein. Eat what you got in there. And you are going to see your grocery bills drop. You are going to see your uh, your bank account increase, and you're going to be healthier. You just are. You're going to be eating better stuff. But, Mike, what's the difference between an elk steak and a, uh, a steak I get at the store? A lot. A lot is different. Uh, there's no uh, water injection. There's no uh, there's no preservatives. There's no dyes to make it look a certain color. There's a lot of things that happen in, in store meat that's gross, and nothing happens happens in game meat that's gross because you know what you you're the one that took that out of there and put it in your freezer. I mean, you might go to like a processing facility, and the processor, uh, you know, that's that's the middleman. So that's it. You don't have shipping and all this stuff and refrigerated and frozen and the thought if forget about it. That's why. So on this eat down to make room, uh, if it may, maybe you got a tag, like I got a tag. So I'm expecting to have an elk in that freezer uh, at the end of the year. So I want to make sure that I, that freezer is woo, starting to deplete as we go along. So, so the big question is um, how long does meat last in the freezer? How long can you have game meat stored? Is it a, is it a year? I, I think that's the go-to that, that I would say most people will tell you. And most people are wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Most people are wrong in saying that a year, eh, about a year, you got about a year to be fine. That'd be fine. Um, if the meat is frozen, here's what I'm going to tell you. Are you ready for this word? I'm going to use the I word. And if it is frozen, it is deep frozen, it has not been thawed, it is just, it's been in there the entire time, and it's not lost temp, it's frozen, frozen, indefinitely. Indefinitely. And you know where I got that from? The USDA. Okay? If meat is frozen, so, if, you know, if you take out a package of, uh, like, a Johnsonville bratwurst or something like that that you had in your freezer, and you're like, ooh, this thing expired, like, four months ago. Nope. It's fine. It's fine yeah and i know somebody's gonna say oh you're gonna get calls you're gonna get emails no i'm not because i'm right in saying this and the usda the u.s department of agriculture actually agrees with me on this i don't know about the fda but who trusts the fda you know holy mackerel um this is a, a good eddie yeah it's right it just hit a year it's fine if you haven't taken it out it's fine okay and even if you've taken it out i'm gonna help you with that as well that's right. This is going to be good information. Uh, so I want you, I want you to pay attention with me and I will, I uh, will go to my notes. So when it comes to storing in a freezer, there are two, two options that are usually used in our outdoor world. The first is butcher paper. And the second is uh, a vacuum seal. So those two make quite a difference in one thing, and that's freezer burn. They don't make a difference in, is this going to be safe to eat or not? That's not what it makes a difference. In. It makes a difference in freezer burn and how much meat you'll have to trim off or not trim off, whatever it is. 
it is the only difference. Now, I have seen on I've seen Steve Ranella from Meat Eater, something I did not know before. He likes to take the uh, saran wrap and he likes to wrap it first really tight, like get as much air out of there as he can and then butcher paper. And that's a fantastic idea in a lot of ways, because if you're processing your own, um, that will eliminate, not eliminate, that will decrease the possibility of freezer burn. The freezer burn, the ice crystals and all of that, that happens when meat um, has moisture leave and air introduced. So once air see uh, during the freezing process. So if there's a hole in the butcher paper, it's not wound tight enough that lets oxygen in, moisture gets out, and that's where that comes from. And you, you probably see with a, um, a really uh, loose uh, vacuum seal. So it happens. That's what happens with that. So um, there's that, and then there's the vacuum seal. Vacuum seal for the win for me. I mean, I get, it, I get my stuff from the processor in butcher paper, and it's fine. It works just great. But for the cuts, the prime cuts that I take from uh, the field and bring home and don't send to the processor, like the tenderloins, backstraps, uh, you know, the, the, the prime cuts that I want to hold on to, those are processed and vacuum sealed at the house, and those are good for good. They're good. They're fine. As a matter of fact, I had bison ribs the other day that were, I believe, over two years old. Delicious. Absolutely 100% delicious. Oh, and if, you, if you've been waiting for the answer on that, I did half of them on the Green Mountain Grill, and I did uh, half of them in the, uh, um, the crock pot. Both turned out fantastic. Both turned out so good that I just combined them, and it just made this nice little uh, pot roasty kind of falling apart uh, meat that you put in tacos. Uh, we made tacos, and then, uh, and then you put them on nachos. Uh, when we're done with this show, I'm, I'm actually, because I didn't have breakfast, I'm going to make a, a bison rib omelet. Yeah, yeah. But that's how long they were in there. They were in there a hot minute. So they were fine. They were good. So indefinitely is a word I'm going to stick with. I'm going to stick with indefinitely because you can quite literally hang on to your meat in the freezer indefinitely. You just have to take care of it. Again, the USDA says it, and I'm going to read this. According to the USDA, it doesn't really matter how long you store game meat in the freezer. Did you hear that? Let me read it again and let me put on the spectacles. All right. Uh, according to the USDA, it doesn't really matter how long you store game meat in the freezer for. Both raw and cooked game meat, including venison and game birds, can stay frozen. There's the I word, indefinitely, and still be safe for consumption. You heard it. Stop this noise. Understand, I, I get it. There are guidelines to how long you've had chicken sitting around in the fridge and how long you've had fish sitting around in the fridge. I get that there's a limit to that. But for the very most part, and I'm, I'm going, this is my belief, the most part, if you see expiration dates on things that aren't uh, super perishable, like lettuce and, uh, and like bagged lettuce and fish and poultry, um, I think the, the old expiration date's a bunch of hooey. I, I just think it's it's more of a guideline than it is. You need to throw this out. So that might save you some money right there. Because, again, if frozen properly, the USDA says indefinitely. How about that? The uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, they don't offer formal guidance on game meat. <laughs> Uh, but they say that uh, that they they recommend uh, around a year time frame. But I don't trust the I I really don't trust the FDA or the Department of Health and Human Services. I just don't. Again, because I've said this now, what it comes down to on how long you can serve your game meat, how how long you how you keep your game meat in the freezer, when it comes to when it, when it comes to quality, that's where we can have the discussion. That's where things matter. Uh. Obviously, your three-year venison steak in there is not going to be as good as it was when it was in there for three months, period. It's just not going to be as good. So if quality is an issue, then by all means, eat down as quickly as you can. Uh, keep that stuff, eat that stuff as fresh as you can, or uh, prioritize some of the cuts. I can hear my 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 loins, my uh, my straps, my every, th those are going to go first. Those are going to be cooked first because I want the freshness. 
Again, if it's in a freezer, it's not going to be, if it's stayed frozen the entire time, it's not going to be dangerous to consume. And according to the USDA, it's not going to be dangerous to consume. It's just not going to be of as high a quality. That makes perfect sense to me. So what do you do? You pull out that roast that has some brown spots, that has some, you know, blood steak. It's got a little bit of freezer burn on it. I want you to treat that like your mom told you to treat cheese. How I taught my kids to treat cheese. This has mold on it. Cool. Cut it off. It's fine. <laughs> Just cut the mold off and eat the dang thing. We've been doing that for years. Same thing with your game meat. If you want to trim, you want it to look nice. You want it to look in red and, I mean, almost a purple. You want that meat to be fine. Cut the silver skin off as we always do. Cut the silver skin off and cut those little pieces off. And by the way, silver skin, yes, ditch, um, or that goes to the dog. And um, by the way, please don't throw your scraps away when you're when you're uh, trimming your meat, even if it's the fresh stuff and you're getting the silver skin off that. I, I My pal Julie down south, she is my dog breeder. Um, she feeds her entire stock of dogs, just raw chickens. Here you go. Those raw chickens, that's what they eat. And they're the healthiest, most awesome, happy dogs in the world. Dogs can eat raw meat. They should. Don't be afraid of this. Um, scraps go to the doggies. That's the doggy tax. Okay. Um, but when you have actual meat that you're cutting away, like the, the, what you see is maybe like a brownish part and, you know, kind of a, a freezer burn part. You know what that's good for? stews uh crock pots and well if you're doing crock pot and stew uh, stew in the crock pot obviously um and uh and, and just chopped up uh maybe you mix it with some fat make may turn that into some burger that doesn't go into a patty because it's going to have trouble holding its form uh go ahead and throw that in like a spaghetti or a lasagna I'm telling you that it it's it's you don't throw this stuff away just because it doesn't look super pretty coming out it's not going to jack you up it's not going to jack your stomach up it's been frozen the entire time. It's been in a suspended state. It's not, there's nothing that could have, nothing can grow. It's good. So take it out, eat it. If some freezer burn got in there, and again, all freezer burn is, is when moisture escapes and air is introduced. So it dries it out a little bit. So that's where the stews come in and things like that. Or a crock pot where, where a lot of moisture and seasoning can be reintroduced. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of those uh, fibers can be broken down. It's fantastic. You don't, you don't have to throw this out. It's, it's still good. If you are like my buddy Slava, uh, Slava is going to be on the show on Thursday uh, with uh, Princess Slava. His daughter went on a hunt, so we'll, uh, we'll recap that. And Slava Salt, by the way, go to slavosalt.com and use the term go show. Uh, sorry, keyword go show, keyword, uh, code, whatever it is, discount code, uh, go show. Pop that in there, get 10% off your order, hands down. Again, I put it on everything. Literally put it on everything. There's nothing I don't put Slavo salt on. I don't cook without Slavo salt, period. Um, but anyway, he uh, he went away to his uh, his uh, his family spot up north and had some uh, stuff going on, some some contractors coming into his house. Contractors cut the uh, power and didn't turn it back on. Slavo lost a good amount of bison, elk, and uh, hog in his freezer. Just gone, rotted, gone. Mm -hmm. So... Be careful about it. Generator is always a good thing. So, which brings us back to how long game meat can last. That that meat's gone, done, done, out. Don't even feed that to the dog. It's bad. So, here's the deal, though. When you, if if maybe you had a power outage, and the freezer was opened, and some of the meat thawed, you better get after it. Get after it fast. That's when you start your eat down because the clock's kind of ticking on that. So, if it gets refrozen, it's not going to be quality meat. You want the you want it to stay frozen the entire time. If it starts to thaw, bad. By the way, if you have a power outage, especially here in Arizona, which power outages last maybe a couple hours max, maybe even overnight, whatever that is, don't open the freezer. The freezer just becomes a big canning cooler at that point. It's going to keep everything frozen. The temperature won't even drop very much um, if if there's a power outage and you keep that door shut. Everything in there should stay just fine, okay? So it, all things, all things considered, you vacuum seal when you can, right? So vacuum seal, and that's, that's generational. By the way, there's so many old guard right now rolling their eyes going, eh, hey, young guy, eh, I put this in butcher paper, and that's all I use. I even used used butcher paper. I really used it, I tell you. Um, 
Okay. Vacuum sealing is period the way to go. It, it just is. Uh, some people, some purists will say, I only vacuum seal fish. Uh, fine, whatever. Uh, I vacuum seal every single thing I can. Um, if you can, uh, the, what kind of a fun pro tip, if you want to vacuum seal your burger, which that's one thing I don't vacuum seal, but if you do want to vacuum seal, go ahead and uh, flatten that out as much as you can. Make it make it like a little uh, little sheet cake and uh, and then, then go ahead and put that in there. It, it really, it, it thaws like that and it freezes like that. So you're not going to have any freezer burn. It's going to super uh, freeze super fast and it's going to be super easy to thaw and, uh, and, and get going. And another key, uh, for someone who likes to cook way too much and way too big, <sighs> one pound packages max. One pound package, half pound packages. If it's just you and uh, your spouse, or uh, you just usually cook for yourself, but one pound uh, se uh, sections to go into the the freezer bags is probably the best idea for you because it's just yeah, I, leftovers are just tough. They just because I love to cook so much, I just keep stacking leftovers, and that ultimately leads to me me throwing stuff away, and that's just not cool so recap use the i word when asked how long mm -hmm. can game meat stay good in the freezer good relative because there's two different types of good good it's not going to hurt you indefinitely 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 good it's going to taste like it did when you when you first put it in the freezer yeah you got about six months to a year on that one anything over that you're going to have a little bit of processing to do right when you uh right when you get a, get it out of the package you're going to make sure again going to make sure to cut away those uh those freezer burnt spots and you're going to reintroduce those into like a stew or something like that not bad meat because it's freezer burnt it is freezer burnt yeah i'm gonna go with that it's not bad because it's freezer burnt it's uh it's just uh lacking hydration it had uh moisture pulled from it it's still fine it, because it's in a suspended state in the freezer it's still it's not going to jack your stomach up uh go and throw that into a stew or into a if you burger it up or chop it up throw it into a uh, a chili or a um, uh, pasta sauce, something like that. Something that's heavy on seasoning because it's it's just lost flavor. It isn't as, wow, that's some good, good venison right there. Wow, that's some really good elk. It lost a lot of that along the way. So again, that is uh, my, my my public service announcement of the day. If you see those uh, those best used by little things on your on your packages, on your food, if it's been frozen, that's not, we're not, we're not playing that game. It's just, that game's not, it's just different. So uh, take it out. Oh, thawing, by the way, I'm terrible at this. I really am. And the FDA and the USDA will agree with me on this one. Um, I'm terrible about planning ahead for things like that and pulling meat out of the freezer to the point where I can put it in the refrigerator and let it thaw. Letting it thaw in the refrigerator is so much better than just leaving it uh, sitting out uh, again because you're introducing oxygen. You're introducing um, a, a, rap, a a drastically different temperature. Uh, to the meat and it changes it a little bit so if, as best you can plan ahead and uh, especially on those eat downs plan ahead and then you can get the uh you can get the meat into the uh wait, wait, i don't know pan where are we cooking it? put it in the fridge yeah i forgot what i was doing that's good <laughs> that is that you just saw live right here on this stream you just saw my my brain glitch <sighs> coffee fixes that each and every time okay so here's the quick recap uh food can stay in a freezer indefinitely it will just lose quality but it's not going to make you uh just uh, keep it frozen how about that Isn't that easy as that that's an easy recap all right uh tomorrow we're going to get back at it eddie thanks for clarifying yes not just doing this saturday morning we're doing this every single day monday through friday uh right here on the go show 11 o'clock wherever you are so if it's uh if it's, if it's facebook if it's youtube if it's x whatever it is. And apparently X just uh, is, is just doing well for us. So X, a lot of you are here on X. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're, we're playing with the algorithm, bringing some good old outdoor fun to, to a platform that doesn't really know a lot about good outdoor fun. Thank you all so much. Uh, appreciate it. We'll see you here tomorrow at 11 right here on the go show. Have a great afternoon, everybody.